So, this is a continuation dun sa topic natin about uh, electric field. Natapos tayo dun sa pag-compute ng electric field. And then, medyo napahapiwa natin yung tinatawag natin electric field ng continuous charge distribution. So, because hindi naman po lagi na ang charge natin is discrete yung bilang niya or pa isa-isa o dalawa-dalawa ka na. No, meron tayo tinatawag na continuous charge distribution in which pwedeng line charge distribution siya or charge just siya along a line. Pwede ring along a surface area and pwede ring volume siya. So, kapag ganun ang nangyayari, ang ginagawa natin, ang analysis natin dyan is we divide the continuous charges distribution into infinitesimal elements uh, sobrang liliit na meron silang charges Q1, Q2 or delta Q1, delta Q2 as you've seen in this figure and then uh, habang dumadami yung ating elements as much as possible, mas madami, mas maganda para mas accurate yung ating um, pagkukuha ng electric field and by applying yung formula natin for the formula or electric field due to multiple charges which is the summation lamang i-add lang natin lahat ng electric field o vector sum ng lahat ng maliliit na elements na yun at habang dinadamihan nga natin yung elements na yun is yung charges mismo or yung delta Q, it approaches zero. So much so na this is the very definition ng integral. Kaya for continuous charge distribution, ang formula natin is Ke, yung constant natin, integral ng dQ all over R squared R um, unit vector R yung dq natin nakadepende kung line charge siya or surface charge or volume charge. Okay, and nandito naman nasulat natin yung formula for dq kapag line gamma dl yung l is yung length ng ating line charge sigma dA or differential area for surface kapag volume naman rho dv or differential volume yung gamma sigma and rho ay tinatawag natin mga density so volume charge density rho which is just the ratio of charges per unit volume surface area naman or surface charge density is of course charges per unit area kapag line charge density charges per unit length So, let's solve an example for continuous charge distribution. Meron na tayong rod of length L na merong uniform positive charge per unit length na gamma at ang total charge na ay Q. So, we need to calculate the electric field at point P as you can see in the figure. Nasa x-axis siya and To be specific, nasa may mismong origin siya kasi nandun siya sa interaction, intersection ng y and x-axis. At ang kanyang distance is a. So, ang distance ng point P natin, dun sa rod natin or line charge natin na may length L ay a. And because this, this is a, meron siyang uniform charge na positive, yung ating electric field, ang direction niya is papunta palabas or palayo doon sa ating uniform or line charge. So, dahil line charge yan, expect natin na ang ating dqi gamma d differential length. So, dun pala tayo dun sa next. Ayan. 
So, ang formula natin for electric charge is equal to Ke integral ng dq all over r squared r unit vector r. Okay, isa-isay natin yan. So, ang direction natin is um, papunta sa negative x-axis. So, itong unit vector r natin, madali lang yan. Palitan lang natin yan ng negative i. So, walang kaso dito sa unit vector r natin. Kasi yun yung direction ng ating electric field. And as you can see, dahil nga positive yung ating line charge, palabas or palayo yung ating electric field. So, ang problema natin is, paano i-evaluate ito? So, dahil nga line charge po yan, ang ating dqi gamma dx for differential length okay uh, kung hahatiin natin yung formula is gamma dl di ba pero yung kung hahatiin natin itong dahil nasa x axis tayo okay hati-hatiin natin yan sa maliliit na pieces or infinitesimal elements so dahil nasa x axis tayo tawagin natin siyang dx for the differential length divided by r squared. Okay. Ano yung r squared? Yung r squared, siya yung distance mula sa point P papunta sa any differential element. So, as you can see, dahil yung point P natin is nasa y-axis or nasa may origin siya, yung distance ng kahit anong differential element ng dx is just equal to dx coordinate, di ba? Kung nandito yung dx mo, oh, kumuha lang tayo ng ano ng example, ito yung example. Pero ibig uh, marami yan. Ibig sabihin mula dito sa umpisa hanggang dulo. Okay? Kaya nga may summation, parang inaad lang natin. So kung nandito yung dx natin, as you can see, yung distance nung point P papunta sa dx is just equal sa x. No? Kahit sa ang sa kahit saan mo kunin yung dx yung distance ni point P papunta kay X which is R is parehas lang dun sa coordinate na X or X coordinate kaya papalitan lang natin ng X yung R dyan kaya magiging X squared sya ngayon yung limit natin is nakadepende syempre dahil merong distansya si point P at saka yung line charge natin na A, magsisimula tayo of course at this point and that is X equals A so magsisimula tayo kay X equals A tapos ang hangganan natin is kung A ito at ang kanyang length ay L therefore ang hangganan natin is L plus A yung ito so, yung dulo natin is L plus A kasi nga A tayo nagsimula yung length niya L, therefore, yung x-coordinate dito sa dulo, kabilang dulo sa right side is L plus A. Kaya, naging L plus A yung ating upper limit. L plus A. Ayan. Wala tayong problema sa gamma. Uh, that is a constant term constant yan kasi line charge density yan. So, pwede natin, kapag nag-integrate tayo, di ba, pwede natin ilabas yung mga constant. So, factor out natin yan. Ang matitira lang dito is dx all over x squared from a to l plus a. Okay? And then, ano ang integral ng x squared? Para lang yan integral ng x raised to negative 2 dx. Tama? So, dahil nasa baba si x squared, pwede mo siyang itaas. Kaya magiging negative yung kanyang um, power. And then, we can apply the power rule for integration which is, magdadagdag ka lang ng 1. Magiging x raised to negative 2 plus 1. Tapos, kung ano yung power, yun din yung nandun sa denominator. Kaya, that will give us x raised to negative 1 all over negative 1 or that is negative 1 all over x so negative 1 all over x at ang limits natin is from a to l plus a 
that is equal to yung negative, hindi siya apektado ng limit, so labas na natin. Ke in gamma, and then paano tayo mag-evaluate ng limits ng integral? Isa substitute lang natin yung mga limits, lower, uh, sorry, upper limit minus lower limit. So, murahin ko na itong nasa ibaba, itong integration part. Basic naman yan dahil naipasa nyo naman ng integral calculus. Pinaka-basic yan sa integral calculus, ang power rule. So, pag sinimplify natin ito, uh, ang kanyang least common denominator ay A times L plus A and that would give us A minus L plus A. Yan, pinagsama ko lang yung fraction dito. No. And that will give us negative K E gamma a minus L plus, oh sorry, minus A all over A times L plus A. Makakancel ngayon yung ating, sorry, makakancel na yung A dyan. Tapos negative si L, mayroon tayong negative sa labas. Therefore, Ang masosolve natin dito, lagi, wala na akong space. Dito lang na sa gilid, ah. Magiging KE lambda L all over A times L plus A. Pero di ba may relationship si lambda at saka si L? Kung matatandaan natin, ang line charge density is equal to Q all over L, or that is Pwede nating palitan dito. Nasaan na yung ano? Pwede nating palitan si lambda dito ng Q all over L times L all over A times L plus A. And that is equal to, syempre makakancel yung L or length. KEQ divided by A times L plus A. Ito na ngayon po yung electric field ng ating line charge. Dito sa next example natin, makikita natin yung importance ng symmetry. Mayroon daw tayong ring of radius A that carries a uniformly distributed positive total charge na Q. Calculate the electric field due to the ring at point P lying at a distance X from its center along the central axis perpendicular to the plane of the ring. Yeah, uh, like so. Yung drawing natin. Again, uh, hindi ito area, hindi ito surface. Para, uh, line charge pa rin ito. Pero hindi nga lang siya line. No? Uh, imagine niyo yung dalawang dulo ng line pinagtagpe kaya nakapag-form tayo ng ring okay as next slide ayan sa formula natin ayan eq all over r squared unit vector r again wala tayong problema dun sa unit vector or sa direction ng e kasi papunta sa i siya ulit. Positive i naman siya ngayon. No. So, ganito ang magiging analysis natin dito. So, hahatiin ulit natin si ring natin sa differential element. So, again, kukuha tayo ng maliit na slice ng ating ring, dq. So, yung nasa taas. Dito sa figure 1. Ayan. And then, kukunin natin ngayon yung electric field at point P. Na, na nasa line ni X which is perpendicular dun sa plane ng ring natin. So, itong point P, syempre, may distance yan na X. So, ilet na lang natin na ano, para mas madaling 
Ang tindihan, ito yung x-axis, yung gitna ng ring, yun yung origin. So, nandito naman yung y-axis. Okay, syempre, kung dahil si P ay nandun sa x-axis mismo, yung distance niya is x. And yung radius ng dq is a. Kaya yung, uh, sorry, yung dis, uh, radius ng ring ay a. Makakapag-form yan ng right triangle kasi nga yung x and y axis natin, di ba? Perpendicular. Yung x axis natin or yung line kung nasaan yung p ay perpendicular dun sa plane ng ring. Kaya pwede tayong mag-form ng right triangle na may radius na r. Yung r, yun mismo yung distance ni P mula sa differential element natin na DQ. Mm -hmm. And from that uh, rectangle, alam natin na yung distance R is Pythagorean theorem. R is the square root of A squared plus X squared. And therefore, R squared or dapat dun pala. R squared is a squared plus x squared. So, para yon dun sa nasa baba. Okay. Para naman dun sa dq, kung iisipin natin na yung ating dq na differential element ay isang napakaliit na point charge. Point charge yan. No? Isipin natin point charge yan. So, at minessure natin yung electric field at point P dahil merong angle of course yung tandaan natin na yung electric field at point P is parehas doon sa unit vector R or kung ano man yung directed line segment papuntang DQ kay P nasa uh, iisang line of action sila Kasa, kaya nakikita nyo yung electric field due to DQ ay kalinya ni R at dahil merong certain angle with respect to the x-axis, meron tayong x-component at meron din tayong y-component or yung component na perpendicular doon sa ating axis na x. And so, kapag minessure natin yung ating electric field, now, ang dq natin is just Ayun nga, merong components na DE, DE, X, at saka DEY. Yun kapag iisa lang yung kinuha nating differential element. Pero dahil ring yan, as you can see, merong symmetry. Kapag kumuha pa ako ng isa pa, dito sa figure 2, kung meron tayong DQ sa taas, syempre meron din tayong DQ sa baba. So tawagin natin DQ1, DQ2. At kapag minessure din natin yung electric field, sabihin natin na si DQ1 and DQ2 are exactly opposite. Magka, uh, ano sila, magkatapat sila dun sa ring. So much so na yung angle din ni, D, uh, ni DQ or yung angle na ma-degenerate ma ng electric field, angle ni electric field DE2 sa x-axis is also equal to theta magkakaroon din siya ng x component at saka, ah sorry, dito yung x component niya, and then meron din siyang y component. Pero as you can see, opposite sila. Yung y components ng ating dalawang charges ay exactly opposite, at dahil uh, pare-parehas naman yung charges niya, exactly parehas din yung magnitude niya and direction. So, ang nangyayari, nagka-cancel out. So, kahit ano man dyan, nakunin mong DQ, kahit kumuha ka dito, meron siyang katapat na kung saan makakancel yung kanyang Y component o yung component ng electric field na perpendicular dun sa x-axis. Kasi ring yan eh. Di ba ang circle lagi yung may katapat? Partner-partner yan. Kahit nandito, meron siyang katapat dito. Again, makakancel lang yung mga components na perpendicular sa x-axis or yung axis ng ating point P. Kaya ang ending, ang nangyari, dahil sa symmetry, na-simplify na ngayon, wala na tayong, because of symmetry, wala tayong component ng electric field doon sa y-axis or doon sa per, uh, 
direction na perpendicular dun sa x-axis. Kaya ang natira lang is yung mga nasa x-axis lang. Because of that, ang titig na lang na lang natin is yung dq natin dito is yung x component na lang ng ating electric field. Kasi nga mawawala na yung mga perpendicular components. So kung papansinin naman natin dito, para makuha yung ating dex or yung x component ng electric field, makakapag-form yan ng right triangle din, di ba? So katawa lang lang din ulit yan. So ang dex is just equal to de or yung dq cosine theta. Kaya lalagyan lang natin ito ng cosine theta. No, kasi yung uh, x component lang yung i-consider natin. No, wala na yung mga y component. No. And then yung r squared na, ah, sorry, sorry. Equal ito sa ke dq cosine theta na lang. Kasi x component na lang po. Again, kasi nawala na yung mga y-axis or yung mga um, component na electric field dun sa y-axis which is perpendicular to the uh, axis ng ating point P or dun sa x-axis. Bakit siya na-cancel? Kasi symmetry. Because of symmetry. And then yung r squared natin, pwede natin palitan gamit yung ating right triangle kanina, yung ax tsaka r in terms of a squared plus x squared. And again, itong pinagkuha na natin ng right triangle na cosine theta para sa dx. As you can see, similar triangle siya dito sa ating malaking right triangle na may sides A, X, and R. So, pwede rin natin kunin yung cosine theta dun. Dahil same yung angle na yan, similar triangle sila. Ang cosine theta natin is adjacent all over hypotenuse x all over r dito sa malaking uh, right triangle and again, yung r natin is just equal to the square root of a squared plus x squared so that will give us ke integral ng dq all over a squared plus x squared times x all over square root ng a squared plus x squared or that would give us ke integral ng dq x divided by uh, a squared plus x squared parehas yan uh, itong square root meron lang exponent na 1 half itong a squared plus x squared sa kabila na nasa baba ng dq ay may exponent na 1 kaya pwede natin yung pagsamahin magiging a squared plus x squared raised to 3 all over 2. Si x dito ay hindi siya uh, variable. Okay? As you can see, naka-dq kasi tayo. Differential charge. Si x kasi constant yan. For this particular example, uh, phoenix natin yung length, uh, yung distance ni P doon sa uh, center ng ring natin. So, pwede natin yung ilabas. Actually, pati rin si a squared plus x squared raised to 3 halves kasi hindi naman nagbabago yung um, uniform, uh, yung ring ng ating, uh, yung radius ng ating ring. Gano'n din si x. So, lahat ng yan ay pwede natin ilabas. So, magiging k e x all over a squared plus x squared raised to 3 all over 2 integral ng dq. And ano ang integral ng dq? This is just q, which is the charge. So, magiging kex times or keqx divided by a squared plus 3 squared uh, x squared raised to 3 all over 2. 
That is now yung our electric field at point P ng ating ring ring of charge uniform ring of charge so ano yung mga pwede nating makuha dito sa ating kapag inanalyze natin ng konti itong expression natin for our electric field E kapag nandun tayo mismo sa gitna ng ating kapag yung point P natin that is kapag yung x natin ay 0 dito tayo mismo sa gitna ano ang electric field natin diba kapag dito sa equation natin ginawa natin 0 ke magiging keq syempre x squared yun Tapos merong raised to 3 halves, 0 na si A, so x cube. Pero meron tayong x sa taas, kaya k all over x squared. Ah, sorry, sorry. Mali. Kapag yung radius, ah, tama. Kapag si x ang 0 pala, sorry, sorry. Akala ko A si 0. Kung si x ang 0, automatic yung nasa taas natin, dahil 0 yan. So, ang electric field natin ay 0. No, kapag nandito tayo mismo. Kasi magka-cancel na lahat yan. Kung imagine nyo, kung merong electric field dyan, meron ding electric field dito. So, magka-cancel na lahat yan. Kapag mismo nasa gitna tayo nung ring. Magkakaroon lang tayo ng electric field kapag umalis na tayo, lumayo tayo dun sa ring. Kapag yung radius naman na A, yung naging 0, yun na, yung na-approach natin keq all over x squared at ano ulit ito parang nagiging point charge ulit tayo ba? kapag lumiit ng lumiit yung ating radius to the point na it approaches 0 nagiging point charge lang yung ating analysis um, dito na sabi ko last time yung way ni Michael Faraday para ma-visualize yung electric field at saka ay yung electric field intensity at saka ma yung presence niya ma visualize no at sabi nga natin ganito yung representation natin yung electric field kapag merong dalawang charges para silang merong electric field lines so the same analogy ito kung matataan tandaan niyo or kung kinandak niyo experiment dun sa mag magnets magnetic field lines naman or magnetic lines of force yung nilagyan natin ng magnet yung papel sa ilalim tapos nilagyan ng buhangin ba merong susundan yung buhangin sometime pag shake mo siya merong susundan yung buhangin na lines kasi doon lang yung merong magnetic forces ganun din naman yung electric field Meron din tayong tinatawag na electric field lines. Field of lines. Sa electric field lines, uh, tandaan nyo na yung electric field ay laging tangent dun sa electric field line sa kahit anong point. At hindi lang to 2D lang, no? Kagaya na nakikita natin. Sabi ko nga, 3D yan. Uh, yung direction ng line natin is the same as the direction ng force. Kapag tinitest siya using a positive test charge, Yung number of lines ay proportional dun sa magnitude ng electric field. So, kung kunwari yung isang charge ay mas madami, mas, marami, uh, mas mataas yung charge nung isang charge kesa dun sa isa, mas marami dapat yung electric field lines niya. Uh, habang uh, lumalapit tayo, or kapag lumalakas yung electric field lines, mas lalong nagkakalapit yung mga ah, sorry, kung mas malakas yung uh, electric field or electric field intensity mas dikit-dikit yung electric field lines kung mas mahina yung electric field mas uh, sabog or magkakahiwala yung electric field lines 
ito yung relationship ng kung mas malakas uh, mas mataas yung electric field, mas madami yung lines. No, kapag as you can see mas uh, yung area ni A kay B, mas malaki si B. So yung magnitude ng electric field ay greater sa A kaysa sa kay B kasi sa area, oo, mas malaki si B kay A, pero mas masikip si A kay B. So, kay B, mas dispersed yung lines or yung electric field kesa or compared kay A. Mas compact, so mas malakas yung magnitude ng field. At as you can see, mas magkakalapit din yung linya kay A, kasi nga mas malakas yung electric field niya, mas magkakalapit. Habang humihina yung electric field, manadidisperse siya, lumuluwang naman yung distance between electric field lines. So, ang notation, ganyan pa rin. Parang sa electric force lang din. Kapag opposite sila, or kapag pareha sila ng charge, yung direction nila, magiging opposite. Yan. Hindi sila magtutugma kapag parehas naman yung or opposite naman yung charges magdidikit yung electric fields nila ito naman yung representation kapag may mas malaking charge so dito yung left charge natin ang charge na is positive 2q yung sa right charge negative q so twice yung charge yung magnitude ng charge twice kaya kung mapapansin nyo lahat na ng kay Q na line ay nagamit na sa mata lang kay, kay 2Q may mga sobra pa kasi proportional siya kung mas maram, mas mataas yung charge mas marami siya ang electric field lines Kung yung ating charge particle naman is idinaan sa isang uniform electric field at kapag yun lang yung um, force na meron doon sa system, uh, ito yung equation natin ng electric field in terms of electric force at saka yung charge niya. Uh, nirearrange natin para makuha yung electric field force sorry, electric force in terms of electric field at yung charge mag-equal dapat yan sa MA kapag yung ating particle ay nandun nga sa uniform electric field at wala nang ibang force kundi yung electric field lang yun ang ibig sabihin lang nito, yung electric force will cause the charge particle to move or magkikreate siya ng motion. Okay, yun yung net force. So, equal siya of course dun sa yung MA, that is yung diba, kung, kung wala yung electric force, yung may mass yung charge particle natin, so MG sana siya, weight. Pero dahil mayroong ibang force, Newton's law, force equals MA at dahil yung electric force natin is yun lang due to the electric field lang Q yan mula sa definition natin ng electric field and rearranging this equation makukuha natin that the acceleration equals QE divided by M big sabihin lang nito uh ang electric field can cause electric or charged particles to move. So, example, meron tayong uniform electric field E, which is directed along the x-axis between two parallel plates of charge separated by B. A positive point charge of Q of positive point charge Q of M is released from rest at point A pagpunta kay B which is at the negative plate 
ano daw yung speed ng particle natin at B. Mm -hmm. Mula sa ating equation kanina na dinerive, ang acceleration due to uniform field ay QE divided by M. At dahil nag-accelerate siya, so i-apply natin si Tito Vic and Joey. Meron tayong initial velocity na 0. Ano daw yung final velocity natin sa kabila? From physics for engineers natin, kinematics equation, Vf squared equals Vr squared plus 2 A. A, uh, 2A Yung delta x, yun yung um, difference in position. So, as you can see naman, yung difference na ng position natin from A to B, that is just the distance D. So, pwede nating palitan yun. At yung ating initial velocity naman, um, from rest siya, sabi niya. So, magzi-zero lang ito. So, therefore, ang Vf squared, or final velocity natin at point B is equal to 2 times. Ang acceleration natin is Q times E divided by M times D. And that is Vf squared equals 2 QE D over M tapos kunin mo lang yung square root which is final velocity is equal to the square root of 2QE D all over M. Q is the charge. E is yung electric field ng ating plate. D is the distance. M is the mass of the particle.